Never let your fear decide your future. Rob Four rants about everything related to making money. Let's do this. Well, hey, this is Rob Four, and welcome to our very first edition of the Ultimate Success Rob Rants About Anything and Everything Related to Making Money episode. Episode number one, here it is. Now, I'm not going to name the episodes, episode number one, number two, number three, number four, and there's a reason why I'm not going to do that, and I'll share that reason with you uh, as we hang out together over time. Uh, But let me just say, my name is Rob Four. Since 1996, my wife Lisa and I, we have built numerous six-figure, even multiple six-figure income streams, working part-time in our spare time, both online and offline. We, we have numerous businesses online. We have numerous, numerous uh, business interests and investments offline as well. And what I have here is I have an hourglass that actually has 15 minutes of sand in it. And so what the goal is, is every day just kind of hang out, 3, 5, 10, 15 minutes, hang out and talk about anything and everything related to having success whether that's success on a financial, emotional, spiritual, or physical level. Chances are, been there, done that, and we're going to continue to be there. We're going to continue to be doing that, so we might as well hang out and talk about it. Talk about lessons learned, lessons we're learning, lessons we hope to learn, how to apply those so that we can start creating wealth on the fast track while enjoying the journey. After all, it makes no sense to work your fingers to the bone only to have bony fingers or end up having wasted your time doing nothing but working. You know, if you think about it, why do we work? Well, we work to create a lifestyle. Why wait to live that lifestyle? Start living that lifestyle now. So right now, what we want to talk about in this lesson is we want to talk about never let your fear decide your future. What's that you say? Never let your fear decide your future. You know, if we're always looking in the rear view mirror at what we've done before, what happens is we tend to have a very selective memory and we tend to remember things that didn't work necessarily to our benefit. You know, we have selective memory. We, we tend to remember the bad things. You know, we tend to remember those times when we were embarrassed. We tend to remember the times we didn't live up to everything we should have. We tend to remember the times we were fired versus the times we got hired. We tend to remember the times we had failure versus the times we had success. We remember the time we lost you know, where, where we gained 20 pounds, we don't remember the time we lost 10 on the diet. So we tend to remember the times where we've had challenges. So if we're looking in that rear view mirror, beep, 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 we're looking from a view that tends to have mistakes and challenges. And so then we cloud our view going off into the future based on fear. We have a fear of failure. What if I do it and it doesn't work? Again. Again? Beep, beep, beep. We're we're basing our future based on our experiences of the past. Never let your fear decide your future. Just because it happened, went south sometime in the past doesn't mean it's going to go south today. Just because you sucked at something yesterday doesn't mean you you will continue to suck at something tomorrow once you put in more time, effort, and practice once you've had a chance to master your skills. Now, I've learned over the years that there's both, for me personally, you know, I had to deal with both and still deal with fear of failure and fear of success. And fear of success is is a funny one. You know, this really came to my mind. I became very clear that fear of success was very, very real for a lot of people. When I was uh, really building our primary network marketing company, a company I personally have a team of over 10,000 active distributors 
uh, worldwide in this one particular company. But one of the leaders on our team early on, we had done some lead generation, some online lead generation. I generated about 18 leads overnight. And the next day I called them up and actually I let three or four days go by. I called them up and I didn't see anybody uh, coming into his downline, coming into his genealogy. So I gave him a call, said, hey, Rick, what's what the heck is going on? We had 18 leads there. Have you haven't haven't you signed anybody up yet? And he goes, no. And he goes on to give me a whole bunch of reasons why not. They were broke. They were tire kickers. Nobody had money. They wanted to know if it was a pyramid scheme, blah, 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 blah. Now, I, at the same exact time that we had generated 18 leads for him, I had generated about 18 leads for myself. And out of the 18 I had generated, same group of people, same opportunities, same economic everything. Everything was exactly the same. But I sponsored 12. 12 out of the 18, he sponsored zero, the big goose egg. And I didn't understand. I thought, well, maybe it's just a lack of skills. So I spent the next five to seven days. This happened to be a guy that lived lived in my same town. So I spent an hour with this guy every day for about a week. And we did prospecting skills and drills and you know practice drill and rehearse. At the time, we were doing a lot of prospecting calls. And so we got his skill from where it was to better, much, much better. And again, he still wouldn't sponsor people. And then I finally came to the real, I finally came to the realization he was petrified to sign anybody up because the second he did, he then didn't know what to do. See, I was doing all the training. I was doing all the coaching. I was doing all the we were doing home meetings back then. I was doing home meetings. I was doing pretty much everything. All you had to do is bring your prospects and let me handle them. Well, Rick, for some reason, was thinking once he signed somebody up, he would then become the leader of his team, which he is, would be. As soon as you have one person, you are now the leader of a team, a small team, but it's a team nonetheless. And he didn't know what to do. So he let that fear of, I don't know how to be a leader, decide his future. He was unconsciously sabotaging his sponsoring success because he had fear of success. See, if he were to sign somebody up, then he would be responsible to answer their questions, to guide them to the training they needed to maybe host presentations for them to step up his game to the next level so we would always stay a step ahead of his team so we could stay in that leadership role. Well, once I figured that out, once we found out, oh, there is such a thing as called fear of success, we dealt with then with that and Rick went on to become a, a very successful sponsor and leader in our team. But you want to take a look at that. You want to take a look at fear of failure. You're not doing something because you think you may fail. Maybe you failed in the past. Maybe you didn't have great results. And for some, and you got to figure out what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being embarrassed? Are you afraid of ending up with less money than you started with? Are you afraid of wasting your time? Kind of like watching TV or something like that. What are you afraid of? Feel the fear and do it anyway. If you do it long enough, the fear will just go away. Same thing with fear of success. What are you afraid of? If you were afraid of, you don't know how to be the leader. You don't have team training sites. You don't have materials. Chances are your upline sponsor does or your company does. Uh, maybe you're not involved in network marketing at all, but you don't take the actions that will guide to success. In fact, here, here's one, this one, uh, and this is more common than you know. Recently, I was at an event and I had to leave early. So I caught a plane, uh, an emergency flight home. And I ended up, we, it was one of those coincidental things, synchronistic things. I ended up sitting with a guy from the event who also had to take an emergency flight home. So we ended up on the same plane, same flight for about two and a half hours. And he was sharing with me that he had produced over 300 YouTube videos 
uh, all keyword researched, produced all these videos, and had got you know got in, got busy, and took massive action. And he was making about fifteen hundred dollars a month. And I'd ask him, well, what exactly are you doing? But he couldn't get to the next level. That was the the topic of the conversation. Hey, I'm doing fifteen hundred a month, but I don't know how to take it to the next level. What can I do? So I was asking him, well, what have you done? Well, he had created the 300 videos. Here's where it turns out. He had created 300 videos, but he had only published and promoted 22 of those videos. 22 out of 300. So here he had 22 videos that were producing the result we'll call $1,500 a month. It didn't take him any time to manage or maintain those video promotions once he published them and started to promote them. Zero time. So he was asking me, well, what do I go, what do I do to go from 1500 to the next level? Call that 3000 or 5000. And it was very simple. Why don't you simply publish and promote the rest of those videos? He had three, oh, you know, he, he created 300 videos, had only per, published and promoted 22 of them, which produced $1,500 a month. You would think it was so easy to see that. What he didn't see is he had stopped doing what was working, fear of success. Here was, you know, once we dug a little deeper, here was a guy who had never made more than $30,000 a year ever in his life, young guy. Now, all of a sudden, he's making $30,000 a year and more between his job and his new home-based business, and he had fear of success. What am I going to do when I get rich? You know? And so he stopped. He let his fear decide his future. His fear was keeping him small. Mm. Think about some of the things that you've done that have proven successful that you stopped doing. Why did you stop doing those? Why did you stop? You may argue you stopped because you were bored. You may argue you've been doing it for three years and things change. But really, if it was working and you stopped doing it, chances are you have fear of success. Never let your fear decide your future. And tomorrow, I'll meet you back here once again. Be blessed. Great marketing. We'll chat.